The Leap Air LTM1750 is a large 9-axle mobile crane that can lift a maximum of 750 tonnes. To celebrate the launch of the real crane, Leap Air commissioned this 187 scale model from WSI. It comes in a windowed box in the usual Leap Air branded box style, but there's no information about the real crane. Inside the box the model is contained between a couple of clear plastic formers. There's no instructions supplied with the model, but as we'll see later the assembly is really quite straightforward. With the top clear former removed we can take the parts out and the main element is the crane itself. And the other parts are the counterweight tray and there are two blocks of counterweights. There's also a metal hook block and a bag of small parts that have to be used to assemble and operate the model. To assemble the model in road going configuration the only parts you have to fit are a couple of door mirrors and they just press into place. This is a small model, of course, it's in 1 to 87 scale, so the mirrors themselves are pretty small pieces. But the good news is they fit well. Looking underneath at the chassis, the detail is simple, as you might expect from a small scale model, and there's no working steering or anything like that. The wheels look good and they have rubber tyres with a realistic tread pattern. At the front, the driving cab is good when you think of the small scale. It's got detailed lights and a reasonable interior. The area behind the cab is really good, it's metal and it's very detailed. At the rear of the carrier there are lights detailed by graphics. The outrigger beams are plastic and they're non-extendable, but they do have good chevron graphics on the end. The crane cab looks convincing with a detailed interior, but the small scale means there's no handrails around the outside. The rest of the crane body looks good with a silvered ladder on one side, but there is an opening for the winch key that drives the winch drum. The counterweight blocks are realistic, with the Liebherr name rendered really well in small graphics. The counterweight tray is all metal, and because of the small size, some of the winch drums are just formed within the metal casting. The lower main boom section is metal, with some good detailing, but the inner boom section is plastic, and the top of the main boom has a single metal pulley, and the other bank of pulleys is a plastic moulding. Trying the crane out first in road going formation and it rolls very well on the smooth test surface. There's no suspension or steering to speak of, but the individual axles all roll freely. One feature that's been implemented very well is the swinging crane cab which raises from its transport position and it can then swing round for use in driving the crane. The next stage in setting the crane up is to fold out the outriggers. The beams are plastic and they're not telescopic but they fold out into the star formation. And although the pads can't be lowered directly, you can lower the whole of the outrigger beam so that the pads are on the ground. So it can be made to pose realistically. And another option you have is to just use some spreader plates. These ones are not supplied with the model, but they do produce quite a realistic looking setup. The next job is to reeve the hook, so using the special supplied key you can turn the winch drum and release some of the thread. And then run that over the boom top where it rolls over a silver metal pulley and over the plastic pulleys. Because of the small size, the hook is just a single metal block with a tying off point to attach the thread. The counterweight's got good functionality because you can assemble it on the carrier deck as if the crane was self ballasting itself. Attaching the counterweight tray to the crane is also very easy. It's a completely metal part and it just hooks over the end of the crane body. And it's quite secure just by doing that, but there's also a metal pin supplied so you can lock it into place and then the whole thing becomes really quite rigid. The two stacks of counterweight blocks are also metal pieces and they just rest on the counterweight tray. There are little interlocking pins at the bottom and you can just put the counterweight blocks on those pins. Raising the main boom is easy because the ram cylinders are not too stiff but they are stiff enough to hold the boom in an up position. As you would expect you can also rotate the model fully. It's a little bit stiff on the review model but uh, it's fine and you can pose it in any direction that you like. It's a small scale model so there's only one extension of the boom possible, the inner section is plastic, but it works pretty well. In fact the locking mechanism for the boom is just the same as you'd find on most 1 to 50 scale models. With the crane fully assembled you can then play crane driver, the winch works using the supplied key and it's certainly stiff enough to hold any reasonable load you want on the end of the hook. This is a small 187 scale model so just for size comparison here it sits next to a 1 to 50 scale LTM 1050 model. Overall this is quite a well detailed and functional model given the small scale and it's certainly an inexpensive option for anyone wanting a large crane model or where size is an issue or even to use on a model railway layout. All things considered it's good enough to be highly recommended. 